own project called Project Puente, which means Project Bridge, in the El Paso Juarez, but he pronounces it Juarez, <laughs> I don't have that R down yet, um, area, uh, helping visiting groups of students and church groups to, uh, to experience the trail that immigrants take when they migrate from Mexico to the United States so that uh, people have a better sense of what's going on there. And he is going to speak to us tonight about the general subject and about his own project as well. So I'd like you to give a big hand to welcome our guest, Mr. Wes Cosgrove. Uh, well, good evening, and, and thanks for coming out on a, a Thursday evening. Um, I'm actually nearing the end of a, of a two-week speaking tour. Um, the, you're the ninth uh, college university that I've, I've spoken at in the last couple of weeks. As Bill mentioned, yeah, I, I've been invited to, to talk about, to explore with you this, this issue of immigration. Um, and certainly if, if you all are involved in this, um, this PEP group that I've, I've heard so much about, uh, it seems to me that it's particularly important that uh, that you all, that we try to, because one of my, one of my points I'm going to make tonight is in spite of how important the issue of immigration and immigration reform and trying to fix what I think you will agree with me if you, by the end of the evening, that fix what is a, a clearly broken system, um, our politicians in Washington are actually doing little to nothing about it. And so um, we need to, to kind of get on them and, and, and get them kind of light a fire underneath them so they'll, they'll do a little bit more. Uh, on this issue. Um, so I've, I've entitled this, this presentation Immigrants and National Values because for me it's, it, it's impossible to write a definition of the United States of America without using the word immigrant or immigration. We are, if we are anything, a diverse nation of immigrants, people who have come from all over the world and I believe, and perhaps many of you agree with me, that that is actually our strength. Now, immigration has, you know, it's, it's evolving. It, it's coming, from, people are coming from different places. People are coming from different reasons. Well, not so much for different reasons, but let's explore the issue of immigration today and see what it has to do with our history. And I think we're going to see that actually we're going to see that, that what's happening today is nothing particularly new, that we have a lot in common with the immigrants of the past, and, um, and I'm just convinced that this is an issue that if we can fix it, it's in all of our interest. It will benefit all of us if we can do something to fix this broken system. <coughs> so again, the, the title is Immigrants and National Values. Possible subtitles that I was considering. Why are we surprised when poor, desperate people go in search of a better life? Or also, possibly, wouldn't you and I do the same if we were in their shoes? So what I want to do this evening is uh, do a brief history of immigration in the United States, a briefer history of immigration law, um, answer the three questions I get asked most when people come to the border to participate in our week-long program, and then try to wrap up with some conversation between us about possible solutions. I want to just make this point, though, before we, we jump in, is that it seems to me that we human beings are, in fact, a migratory species. Um, human beings, from the first moment that we've shown up on the planet, if things are not going well over here, we move over there. And if things aren't working out too well over there, we move again. In other words, we've kind of moved from one place on the planet and now kind of all over the planet uh, to make a better life for ourselves. That's that's who we are. In fact, I would almost say it's, it's in our DNA. It's a good thing. We're motivated to make a life for ourselves and for our families. The United Nations um, reports that there are some 200 million people in the, in the world who live outside of the country where they were born. And that's not actually too many people. That's only about 3% of the world population. The United States, on the other hand, as you can see, is the blue countries are the countries that receive a high percentage of immigrants. And the numbers are that there are about 38 million 
foreign-born people currently residing in the United States. That's about 12.5% of our population. So how did we get to this place where we are today? You may or may not know that the estimate is there are some 11 to 12 million persons currently residing illegally in the United States. Um, some people use the word illegal. I tend to use the word, call them undocumented immigrants <coughs> or unauthorized immigrants. But the point is, um, they're here without proper immigration status. Uh, about half, a little bit over half, 55% are what the immigration system calls EWEs. That means that they entered without inspection. Those are the people that literally snuck into the United States, either through the river or through the desert. The other 45% are called overstates. These are the folks that came originally into the country legally with a student visa, a tourist visa or something, but then the visa expired and instead of going home like the law requires, they stayed kind of blending in and becoming a part of that 11 or 12 million total. <coughs> Most of that number, as you can see there, are from Latin America. 56% are from Mexico, 22% are from other Latin American countries. Um, interesting enough, I read in preparing for this presentation, I found an article that said there are an estimated 50,000 undocumented Irish immigrants in the city of Boston alone. <laughs> I mentioned that because, well, you know, it's not all Latin Americans, obviously, but let's be honest, the people that we're really kind of concerned about, upset at, are, are the folks who are coming up from the South. So, for the first hundred years of our history as a country, there was really no effort to try to regulate <coughs> immigration. People pretty much got on a bus, a bus, I'm sorry, a boat, and came on over. Um, this slide shows the, for those... 80 years is, is when the most, the highest number of persons came, approximately 30 million people. Why did people come? Why have people come to this country? Well, they're, they're fleeing, they're leaving difficult conditions, either economic or political. So we talk about push factors. People are being pushed out, but then people are being pulled here also. The Industrial Revolution is happening. The United States is, our economic motor is starting to, to you know, fire on all pistons, if you will, and so there's a lot of work, there's a lot of jobs, there's a lot of reason to come to the United States. But historically, we have always, the situation that exists today has kind of always existed, in that we've always seemed to like some immigrants, but there's always some group of immigrants that we're not so hip on. That like, and I'm, a, I'm an Irish Catholic, um, I know that the Irish Catholics were not real popular originally. Maybe, I don't know if it was so much the Irish, it was the Catholic that bothered a lot of people. People thought that the Pope was going to take over the United States. We have to be honest, it's illegal to cross into the United States and get a job without permission. It's equally illegal to hire these folks, and yet we know that, that we're doing it.